Hello and welcome to the Kick in the Creatives podcast, hosted by myself, Sandra Busby, and my fellow creative, Tara Roskell, offering you interviews, inspiration, motivation, and a gentle prod in the right direction. And for lots more information, challenges, and other useful tools to help you get creating, you can go to www.kickinthecreatives.com. And of course, this is where you can also find today's show notes. Enjoy the show. Welcome to episode five and it's minus four degrees outside and snowing as I record this. So as you can imagine, I am freezing cold right now and I'm so desperate for the carrot of spring to be dangled. Anyway, this episode um, really was an interesting one to record, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of differing opinions about this subject. There really isn't a right or a wrong answer, but we had a really interesting conversation about the pros and cons of both going to art school and not going to art school, and there really are pros and cons to both. I hope you find it as interesting to listen to as we did talking about it, and as always, feel free to let us know what your own thoughts are in the Facebook group. We always love to hear from you. Anyway, enjoy. Today we are asking the question, do you have to go to art school to be an artist? But before we get onto that, we just want to say a big thank you to everyone who's joined us for our February challenges and for sharing their work with us on social media. Tara, wasn't it lovely to see all those faces appearing on our feed? Oh, brilliant. It's fantastic. We've had so many and so many different styles as well. I've loved seeing them. Who who have you liked? Oh, gosh. Well, everyone is doing such different styles. I can't really necessarily pick one person, but I'll tell you what I did notice and the improvement that some of the artists made over the month. It was really quite staggering, I thought. I mean, there was one guy in particular, um, Yardell Perkins. Hats off to him because he took part in both February Faces and February Fables. It was great to watch his story unfold. I mean, he's obviously a natural writer. But by his own admission, he was brand new to drawing. Um, Now, when he started sharing his drawings, up to day five, I think it was, he was just drawing the best he could draw at the time. But then on day six, um, he watched the video tutorial that we suggested to him, which we'd posted up on our blog. And the difference between his drawing on that day to the ones before, I thought was phenomenal. It was like a completely different person had drawn it. In fact, you were the one, that, weren't you, that said to me, Sandra, have a look at this drawing compared to what was before. And I think that just goes to show that practice will only make perfect if you're actively learning as well as drawing. Yeah, I mean, he'd actually watched, because you wrote that blog post, didn't you, about how to draw a face. Yeah. And he'd actually taken that video that you'd found and posted yeah. And he'd applied it and you it just made so much difference when he actually sort of used the in sort of instructions, didn't it? It, it does, because you know, people sort of uh, new to drawing will often just draw kind of like an oval and then two eyes and a nose and whatever, but there's much more that goes into drawing a face than that to begin with. And he he um he really did take that in and yeah, he's been really growing right throughout the month. So that was good to see because I suppose it just shows us that those challenges are really worth doing. They're not just something, oh, well, how you know how often can I draw? There's so much more to it than that. And um, I hope he keeps it up. I really do. Yeah, and me too. Writing. I mean, definitely the, the writing, I think he's actually going to publish that. I saw him the other day working out what he was going to do for a cover and then learning about how to put up an ebook i think you might put it on kindle i think that's really great i really do because that's something that's come out of it that would not have been which i think is great well um tara we have been taking part in february faces as well um but not only that we also took part in february fables and unsurprisingly for us we found a quirky way of making it even more fun um so tara you can explain how we did that Yeah, because we were both doing the Faces one, which I'm loving, by the way. Um, And the Fables one, we we couldn't decide whether to do. So what we, I think it was your idea, actually, we'd write uh, 250 words each, stop, hand it over to the other one. So we wouldn't know what the the two of us were writing. And we, we picked the Tooth Fairy prompt. I think I'd done that for the the ones we give away free yeah. on the prompt yeah. sheets. Uh, so, yeah, so we've been doing that way, but we're going to end up breaking our rules, aren't we? Yes, it's been such fun. Um, but what we found was we've both been quite descriptive in a way, haven't we? So if, <laughs> if we're going to try, if we were to try and finish this on day 28, I think we might, well, we'd be rushing it 
and maybe compromising the actual finished results. So what we decided to do was actually the challenge has been brilliant. It's been fun. We're loving it. So do we really have to stop? No, let's just see how the story unfolds and see where it takes us and have fun with it and not pressure ourselves to get it finished by the 28th. As always, we're just, we are, I will explain, recording this a little bit before the end of February. So we're sort of going back in time a bit because it'll air in March, won't it? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be epic, isn't it? So we're going to end up finishing about, about next February. <laughs> <laughs> we have to bring it down to series. It'll be, it'll be like, I don't know, a huge, great, big novel. Lord of the Rings. <laughs> well, we've already decided, we've already said, you know, Hollywood are calling, haven't we, on this book, we've decided. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, we're really having fun I mean, with it. I, I love it. I think as well, I don't know about you, but I'm sure you're putting stuff in there to make me laugh because... <laughs> I'm doing that as well. Well, every time I open the next 250 words, I'm laughing. I'm I'm reading it and thinking, oh, God, who could think, you know, who would think up this stuff? But I think you're probably doing the same, aren't you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah. It's really good. And, and what I find, I think we're pretty much um, on the same page, aren't we? We're pretty similar in, in the way we think, I think. And so our, <laughs> our way of writing, I think we kind of it com- it's not like you look at one bit and think oh you know this is so obviously written by two completely different characters it's not is it it kind of blends quite well I think so with a bit of editing at the end I think it will make a pretty good story but so so tell me about um obviously <clears throat> you took play- part in February phase as well didn't you so how did you get on with that yeah I mean you were saying about how people's drawing improves and I have seen well, do you know, I started in January, so I've now been drawing for how many days is that? 31 plus 21, 52 two days. days. Yeah. So I've been drawing something every day. And, and I have to admit, yesterday's was the worst. But out of all the faces, I can definitely see my drawing improve. I, yeah. I, my hand-eye coordination is clicking back in. Because, you know, it is that thing where you lose it. You, I can't remember the word. Use it or, use it or lose it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, so that's sort of coming back a little bit. And I, I've used stuff like I wouldn't have dreamed of drawing stuff in coloured pencils. You know, I wouldn't have dreamed of doing a full colour face in coloured pencils. And I've been doing that and um, just experimenting. And I've actually been loving it. How, how about you? I probably should have experimented more, to be honest. But I think what I was using it for is... Um, I mean, I'm not a sketcher, as you know. I tend to spend quite a lot of time on my drawings rather than sketch quickly. Um, it's just not in my nature to do that, even if I really want to. So um, to be honest, I have found the hardest part to be loosening up, which you've got to do when time is limited. Um, and I didn't really experiment. But what I did do, uh, because I've been on holiday, as you know, and before that, on the lead up to that, um, we were both um, building this website and creating an awful lot of content and all this stuff. So it took a long time, didn't it? So prior to that, as you know, I'd been getting up every day early, an hour early to draw. And I'd been doing that for about a year. Um, but that kind of went out of the window because, um, well, the t- just the time. I just was using that time to to work on the site and, and then we went on holiday. So basically, I completely got out of the habit. So what this has actually helped me to do is get me back into that habit. So now I'm back out there at eight o'clock in the morning, spending the hour before work, working, you know, working on the drawing. But I haven't experimented. I've been using it more to just brush up on those skills again, because as we said a, a moment ago, it is use it or lose it. And even just that couple of months um, where I didn't go back, it's surprising how quickly you get out of practice. Um So, you know, the pencil starts to feel alien again. Quite honestly, um, I found the hardest part of the challenge was to actually share everything I did, which you've done. You've shared everything. Um, I haven't shared everything. I think sometimes I I just didn't have time to post something. Sometimes I wasn't necessarily thrilled with the results. So I thought, oh, no one needs to see that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But I can't pretend I did that entire challenge because trying to do that along with the children's story finishing my commission doing everything else that goes along with this podcast it would have probably sent me you know off to some sort of mental institute I think but I did draw a a lot of faces far more than I would have done otherwise and it was just so good to get back in the habit 
Yeah, I mean, I don't know why you're so scared of sharing things. Well, I do. I think it's because your paintings are all so detailed, mm. really, really detailed, and you're quite detail orientated. Yeah. And I think because you've you've almost built a name for yourself that way, whereas I've got no name for myself whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> so you can share what you like. Um, I can share what I like, mm. you know, and just say it's an experiment because yeah. I, I'm, I'm all about ideas, whereas y- you do such fine, detailed work. It's almost – I almost feel like you're scared to show it because it goes against uh, what you've shown as an artist. Um, you could – there could be an element of truth in that. I think that there's partly it's because, like like I said before, it's not in my nature to be very loose. But you might remember, I think you actually put it on the actual challenge page, February Faces page. You used one of my old drawings as an example. And it was a, it was a sketch I did of um, Crystal Cook, the artist Crystal Cook. And I used ink um, and gel pen and and actually, it was I loved that, and um, you loved it as well, didn't you? And I, yeah, it's one of my favorites. Yeah, and I just splattered ink on, and it was one of my favorites. And I have actually got a book um, with a few faces, the old faces now that I've I've done in that kind of style. And to be honest, oh, that's what I really like doing. So I should have probably done a few more like that. I think it's a shame I I haven't experimented more. I think. Yeah, I mean, we we have got an episode actually, haven't we, coming up about sharing your work in confidence. Yes. So so maybe you can work on it. (laughs) Although I don't think it's necessary to share something you're really unhappy with. Do you think? Well, do you know, sometimes I think, yes, I think, although mm. I did forget to put mine on Instagram yesterday. Well, a- um, accidentally but, on purpose. <laughs> it, it, well, no, it was really an accident because I was trying to do, I was doing some work for, for our site. Mm. But I did, yeah, I probably would have been keener if I liked it more. <laughs> but, but, yeah, I, I do think sometimes that, yeah, there's nothing wrong with showing. It's like, it just shows you're human, doesn't it? And it shows yeah. that... All these artists, they're probably making loads of mistakes. They just don't show us it. I just think it's, yeah, it's that human element. And I did do one masterpiece. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about this off air, weren't we? Because <laughs> you sent me through. What was it, this message? What was the message you sent? <laughs> I think I texted you saying, oh, have you looked at our Facebook group page? Um, somebody's posted a stunning, in capital letters, portrait. <laughs> Yeah, because the day before I'd posted up some selfies and I was pulling faces and I'd actually draw them on myself, which I should know by now. It's lethal doing anything like that. So, But I didn't actually realise it was you that drawn it. So I thought somebody else had, had drawn it in the group. So I was like, I was thinking, oh, my God, oh, my God, what is going to be there? And then I, I looked at it and it is actually a really good drawing. <laughs> I'm most insulted that you haven't put it as your profile picture. I, I can't believe you haven't done that. <laughs> but for what it is, for, for anyone who hasn't seen it, it's me putting a really weird face of my tongue out. So, <laughs> yes. Yeah, that, that was very, very, oh, yeah. very brave of you putting those photographs up. <laughs> Stupid, I think the word is. Anyway, the good news is um, I have finally finished my commission, which um, has really taken the pressure off for a while. If I hadn't have been working on that commission throughout um, the whole of February, um, I probably would have been even more involved in Faces. But obviously I had to kind of really spend all of my spare time pretty much working on that to get it done but I've done it so that's brilliant so um and they like it don't they 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 love it they love it um so I'm so relieved because I was terrified (laughs) I'm gonna post it on social media um uh, in March um it's actually what is it today 21st is it 21st February Uh, yeah so yeah in a few days time I'll be doing that but um yeah they do love it so I'm really relieved and now I've just got that nightmare of getting it to Massachusetts um this this massive painting (laughs) I've got to let it dry for a bit longer first but it's going to be quite interesting um it's scary but I will be taking part fully in five minute march because as we said I'm one of these people as you've said um way too much into detail and blah 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 so five minute march i think will be a really good exercise for me because nobody needs to expect much from five minute march um there's no pressure at all to do it is there so i'm going to enjoy that i'm going to literally set a timer and this is what everyone should do just set a timer have have what you're going to draw ready you know so you know what you're drawing um set the timer and literally just stop at five minutes no matter where it is and then photograph it then post it up online if you want to work on it for longer after that then fine but 
it's the whole thing is to get whatever it is you're doing, you know, done in five minutes. So I'm looking forward to that one. I think that all might help me out yeah, a bit. I think that's one as well where there's no excuses not to take part in that because literally more or less anybody can find five minutes, even if it's in your lunch hour, you know, during a break, yeah. sitting, waiting for someone in the car, anything like that, you can do that one. And just in case we're, we're I mean, it will already be kicked off by the time this podcast airs, it will just be kicking off. But just in case you were not taking part yet, we're going to create some prompt sheets or we will have created some prompt sheets and some reference sheets. So if you're really, really short on time, you can just download one of these. You can either join the Facebook group or get our newsletter download these sheets and they'll have like three or four reference images on for each page or each day draw one of those if you've got no time there's there's really no excuse whatsoever yeah because I think some of the the times with challenges is kind of like oh god but what am I going to do what am I going to do today and it kind of takes that away from the you know what I mean yes decision making isn't it it just takes the time yeah it takes that part of it away so all you've got to do is just think right what's today's prompt okay got five minutes to to do that so I'm looking forward to seeing what people produce for that I really am yeah I mean I'm I'm thinking of doing the other one actually the other challenge which is mixed media yeah March mixed media you're kind of doing it already in a way aren't you I know which is exactly and I never really would have thought I would like mixed media Hmm. and I've really got into using tinted paper you know, like coloured and tinted papers. Yeah, I love um, drawing so on So cool. Yeah. So cool at the end when you put your white in. It just pings. It pops, doesn't it? Doesn't it? it really does. Yeah. I'm thinking of doing that. And then when I haven't got time or if I'm really short of time, I'll maybe throw in a five-minute one or something like that, maybe mix them up a little bit. Good idea, yeah. <laughs> well, in today's episode, we are actually discussing whether or not you have to go to art school in order to become an artist. Um But before we start, I do want to stress that there is no right or wrong path to follow here. We're all different and where some of us will benefit hugely from going to art school, um, others, I think, will only be stunted by it. But firstly, um, let's get one thing absolutely straight. Going to art school doesn't necessarily make someone a good artist. Um, But equally, not going to art school doesn't make someone a bad one either, Um, I've had the experience of both going to art school and also abandoning it um, and teaching myself. So I am able to share some of my own experience of both. So what about you, Tara? What's well, did you, you know, did you go to college. Uh, yeah, I went to college, and at the time when I went to college, I actually I wanted to be an artist. That that was all I've ever wanted to be since I was like three, probably. And so when I was at school, I, I stayed on did A levels, and my teacher said oh, you'll get into college, you know, no problem, you'll walk it, you know, the class. And then I went to get into the foundation and they turned me down. And like, but they agreed I could go on this two-year art course. So I did that and we did it. And I must admit, this two-year art course, I absolutely loved the first year because you just got, first time I was with all these arty people, I was experimenting. I'd, I'd, before that, I'd always drawn, drawn very sort of straight things that you could see. Whereas yeah. this was much more about oh. opening your mind up. Yeah. So so from that point of view, you know, it was absolutely brilliant trying out all these different things, you know, jewellery, pottery, everything. But but nowadays, I think there's so much more available that you can do yourself. Whereas back then, I mean, that was, oh, I don't even think about it. <laughs> I'm trying to even work out the amount of years. I can't even, ca- it must be, oh God, getting on for 30 years ago. No, 20 years ago. But back then, anyway, there was there was no internet back then, you know. Oh God, no! It was in the dark ages. We didn't <laughs> well, even have electric. no heating. No. <laughs> so so yeah, but now I think you can you can do stuff yourself, and I think as long as you've got artistic talent or or you want it enough, even I think you can learn yourself. So so how about you? Basically, I I don't think it's necessary to go to college to become an artist. I should say that straight away. Um, uh, there might be people that really disagree <laughs> um, but I don't think it's actually necessary because of those reasons you don't have to go to art school now because with the internet now it's amazing isn't it what you can learn I mean there are massive benefits in learning the fundamentals of drawing definitely and I think if you want to take your art seriously then of course those basic techniques are really really important to learn um, I mean you've got to have something to build your skills upon but nowadays you just don't necessarily have to go to art school to learn them um 
I just want to go back, though, Tara, to what you were sort of saying about the fact that you weren't able to do the course you originally wanted to yeah. do. And I think the thing with art school these days, um, certainly unless you go somewhere like Florence or something like that, they don't want to necessarily take on people that are great at, at drawing and showing all those abilities to actually draw. They want to take on people that are experimental and I mean, my niece, funny enough, um, she is absolutely brilliant at drawing. She's so, so good. And she's, you know, she really has um, got a natural talent to do it. And she wasn't, and she wanted to go to art school and she wasn't accepted. Um, and she, funny enough, is now doing graphic design. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, it's where all the, all the art uh, failures go, you see. Yeah, but, but I, I, do you know what I think it is? I think... What happens is that people will um, submit their portfolio and unless you have thrown, you know, I don't know, some sort of medium at a page and sat on it naked and, I don't know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, sl sloshed alcohol all over it and then said, okay, this is, uh, I sh maybe I shouldn't be saying this, but I, <laughs> <laughs> but I I do feel sometimes that unless you you just show them you're willing to really experiment, then they're not necessarily so interested in you. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing at all. I'm really not. But I feel like they're focusing more on that kind of thing now than the actual initial skills that you need in the first place do you, do you know what I mean yeah maybe I mean, I'm going to make a lot of enemies saying all that I don't know <laughs> well, well I don't know how much it's changed now but back then it was to, I mean they said I needed the two-year course because I needed to develop that creative yeah. thing but and it was like you've said before it was nothing to do with painting I don't think we learned and we did life drawing we did sort of learn that but it was definitely more about creativity and we used to do some really bizarre things like you think it's more performance art some of the you know the odd yeah. things because I remember one day one of the teachers and I'm sure he used to, to provoke us almost to provoke things he said right next week what I want you to do is come in looking completely different to how you normally would I want you to dress as your opposite so, right so basically we had to go in dressed Completely how he wouldn't, and I don't remember. I can I can vividly remember this because I was always like, you know, your jeans, scruffy jeans, your jumper. Because I used to get covered in paint, um, mm. quite quite scruff bag, trainers, pair of trainers. Which is most of us used to dress pretty much like that. And I went in in yellow stilettos, fishnets, <laughs> short <laughs> short. God, I could have been picked up on the street. <laughs> And um, I remember what, going down to the canteen and, like, everyone's just like, oh, my God, you know, they're all staring at you and everybody's dressed completely differently. But this guy just, it was all to provoke, um, yeah, you know, to provoke almost you being annoyed about it because I used to get quite annoyed about it. And oh. then he made, I remember the next week he made us do a performance of some kind uh, again, it was all like performance art. So I did this poem about his bizarre lessons, you know, and stood up and read it. it just what has this got to do with art? Yeah, I mean, you, well, you were quite a rebel, I think, were you? A little bit? <laughs> no, I wasn't. I was really quiet. But the stuff he did used to really annoy me. Yeah. And yeah. I suppose he did what he wanted to do because he provoked a reaction out of me. Because whereas normally yeah. I'd just toe the line. It really, yeah. it really irritated me. Which maybe is what he wanted. Yes, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was, when I was young, we were still making <laughs> fire out of two sticks and flints and all that. We, were, yeah. we didn't have the internet um, when I was really young. But when I was in my 20s, um, I started playing around with my pencils again. Um, <laughs> that sounds so funny. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so so I, I'd always been drawing as a as a kid, nothing serious. But um, and then I had my kids and started doing things like um, painting murals on their walls and things like that. And I realised then I absolutely loved it. I was like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm actually not bad at this. You know, I mean, I'd never sort of had any lessons or anything like that, but I really enjoyed doing it. But it was when I was in my thirties, I just got the bug. I think the kids had grown up a little bit, and um, I, I just started. I bought a sketchbook I, I, I remember I've told you this story a million times but um took me six months to open it because I was worried about you know spoiling the pages and all that stuff um 
but anyway, I got this bug, and and it, it's funny, isn't it? Once you once you get the bug, it really grips, doesn't it? If you're really yeah, that totally way, does, yeah. it it really does grip you. But I decided that if I wanted to call myself a real, in quotations, a real artist, um, I would surely need to get an official piece of paper that gave me the right to say that, <clears throat> which when you think about it is ridiculous, isn't it? I mean, someone either loves your work or they don't. Nobody's ever going to care how you learn to do it. I mean, it's not like being a doctor no, or something. No, not. No, I mean, when have you ever questioned if the author of your favourite book learned their craft at college? Would it stop you buying another one of their books? Well, no, of course it wouldn't. I mean, creativity is an entirely unique area in that way. Uh, But anyway, I decided to enrol in art school and get a degree. That was my plan. Um, And it might sound contradictory, but although enrolling in art school was one of the best decisions I ever made... um, abandoning it was the next best decision I ever made um so I completed the first year was this full time time you were doing this well because I um had children I had a job and all the other things so I couldn't do it the traditional way I couldn't actually go to college and and learn in two years I I had to do it over seven years but it was an open arts college so what you did you get sent all this work and then you have um face-to-face tutorials um two or three times a week um in a local you know with a um tutor that was closest to you there was one about oh, 10 miles away from me so that was that was fine um so you still got a lot of hands-on um but the majority of it you could do in your own time at home and then you'd have to send your work off to the people in london where they would come back to you with you know telling you what everything you've done wrong <laughs> i don't understand this either how can someone tell you something's wrong <clears throat> well i had that a lot <laughs> i had that a lot i i basically i i completed the first year so that was the part where i learned the fundamentals of drawing and i would not change that for anything because i i couldn't have, i couldn't be doing what i do now unless i had done that um but i was really disappointed that once that part of the course was over and the painting part began, um, which is the bit I was most looking forward to, it just went directly on to breaking all the rules, which I've got absolutely no problem with. But surely you've got to learn what those rules are before you can start breaking them. And I hadn't been, it, that just wasn't happening. Um, they had completely skipped the part where you learn the actual techniques of painting, perhaps the classical techniques of painting. Um when I questioned my tutor about it, he said, "He said, oh, those techniques just aren't being taught anymore unless you study somewhere like in Florence or something like that. He said, but quite frankly, they should be left in the past anyway. It's all dated. Um, and he started really encouraging me heavily to paint like he was painting. Um, but his style, it just wasn't me at all. I, was, I found myself just trying to paint like someone else instead of trying to find my own style. I remember one day, because um, he used to, teach from his he had a a house and he had an art studio outside and I remember one day we were painting some rooftops we set up our easels in his garden and um, I was fascinated by the light which was bouncing off the roofs on that particular day and in some areas the roofs were actually lighter than the sky which would normally be the other way around wouldn't it and I was in yeah and I was interested in doing that but he just he came over and he said Um, do you need to be a bit more experimental? He said, look, because I was using watercolours that day. We were both using watercolours and I was doing it the normal way, mix them up with water, blah, blah, blah. And he said, right, what I want you to do, I want you to use watercolours directly from the tube and paint big, bold black outlines around Mm. all of your rooftops. And (laughs) it made no sense because I thought, (laughs) well, A, I've never seen a rooftop with a big, bold black outline in my life anyway and b i realized i'd be doing exactly the same as what he was doing <clears throat> so basically he was kind of trying to give me his style yeah. um and i pers- i did persevere for a few months but eventually i realized i just wasn't learning anything of any benefit to me at all and it took the enjoyment away if anything it, it was crippling any chance i had of developing my own unique style so in the end i i decided i would leave art school and um, research the techniques myself, which, of course, by then we had the internet um, and it was, you know, a lot easier to do that. I must stress, though, at this point, that this was my own personal experience of art school and I can only draw on that. Obviously, I know that 
every, you know, a lot of other people out there will be thinking, oh, but my experience was wonderful. And, and it is right for some people. It just was not right for me. Yeah, I mean, I think it must must depend on, on the art school. And I think it yeah. must depend sort of how dated they are as well. I mean, I went, and obviously I'm talking from years back as well, because I went and um, learned graphic design after doing the art course. Um, and back then, you know, everybody was on computers and yet that art course was still on drawing boards. It's, they were so behind the times. And I've actually been to look at my old art old graphic design college i've been there to see people's stuff about 10 years ago and it was still the same case so they were obviously on computers but what i mean was like none of them had a website uh, and I'll, that sounds tiny but all these people should have been they, they weren't learning how to sell themselves as well you know so they weren't learning mm. that side i know that's not the art stuff but it's almost like some of the artists are perhaps out of touch some of them back then that uh, I don't know if they are now. I mean, what I'd hope now is that more of them actually are practicing artists. Yeah, know? yeah. And I, I actually tried, um, this must have been about 10 years ago, I tried going back to college one day a week to learn animation. And I actually found then that the two tutors, they had never worked in the animation industry. So, oh, really? so I don't actually... How can they teach you? Well, then? because one guy had uh, gone on and done some sort of, higher course so he'd probably gone and done you know a course after school you know like a, a two-year course or whatever in animation and then mm. the other guy used to do a little bit as part of his graphic design work but not it was like oh yes I can also do a bit of that he'd done a few bits and I heard him sitting there chatting one day saying oh yeah the, the only one that's actually done any animation you know out of all of us is another teacher who wasn't actually teaching our course Oh. Yeah, and I, I don't know how, if it's like that, you know, in most colleges now for teaching sort of art subject. Yeah. But, you know. Yeah, maybe. It almost takes me, I know this is completely changing the subject, but as an example, when I had both my kids, as you know, and they were babies, I remember both my health visitors came round and, you know, giving me all this different advice, but neither one of them had children. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I remember thinking to myself, how can you, how can you tell me that, how can you tell me this when you've never had a baby in your, in your life, you know? So it, it's, it's like that, isn't it? You kind of think, well, surely to be taught something, you need somebody to have I've lived it almost, experienced it. Yeah. I was going to, no, I was just going to ask you, um, you said you went about learning these art techniques yourself. And I was just wondering mm. how you did it. Okay, well, first of all, um, I really, I'm so lucky. I've got parents that just love going to boot fairs. They love it. And my mum used to come around with armloads of amazing art books. They've always been so encouraging in this whole thing I've been doing with art. Um, they love it. And uh, so they used to just pick all these amazing art books up. Some of them were... Um, was really, really old and out of print, but they were priceless because it was information that was actually hard to come by now. I mean, I wanted to learn the classical techniques. Um, I think there's probably slightly more on it now than there was back then because I think in a way that is coming back a little bit. People are wising up a little bit, I think, and wanting to know more. So perhaps those, some of those books are coming back into print now. Um, but they were priceless. I studied those books from cover to cover um, trying to find what I wanted to learn. Um, obviously, the internet is the most amazing place to find information. Um, I've got to say, though, with the internet, what you have to be careful of is that if you go onto somewhere like, say, YouTube, and you think, right, I want to learn, I want to learn how to paint in layers, um, or I want to learn to paint a la prima or whatever you want to learn what you have to be careful of is you want to make sure that any videos you're watching are actually made by someone who does actually know what they're doing <laughs> because I did come across one or two videos that were talking about <clears throat> painting in uh, layers and mixed media and stuff like that and there was one person who was basically saying that you you could paint oils and then if you wanted to you could just you know do the final layer in acrylic just so it you know that dried quicker or whatever and that's completely wrong <laughs> I didn't luckily I knew that but I did it did make me think oh actually I've got to be really careful here what what videos I, I am actually watching because you can come across some that are giving you really wrong information and when you want to learn 
the proper way, obviously it's really important that you you get the right information. Um, but anyway, so I was careful with. I did, but I did watch lots of videos. Um, along the way, I met Rosa Branson, and then I went along to her house up in Highgate in London, and she is amazing. I mean, she paints. You know this commission yeah. I've done, which is um, I thought it was really really big. She sort of tends to paint about eight foot long canvases by five foot. That's her average. How big is yours? Painting. Is yours? Oh, I'm trying to work this out in feet now. It's actually thirty. <laughs> Can you do the conversions? Because oh, my phone is fixed up. Well, it's 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 actually big for me, but it's thirty eight inches high by fifty six wide. Whether that's about five foot it's about wide, is it something like that? Divided by twelve, what is it fifty something? Yeah, it's about five foot long, um, and then about three four foot high or something like that. But against hers, it's basically a miniature, to be honest. And she is incredible, and she obviously has learnt. She was taught by a Russian restorer, an art restorer, obviously years and years and years ago. And of course, she was sort of allowing me to paint alongside her, and and it was lovely, absolutely lovely to. I mean, just to sit in her studio. Do you know what I mean? See yeah. all her art, and it was great. So I did that. Um, I learned a lot from Rosa. Um, there's absolutely no question. If you're going to teach yourself, you've got to have self discipline. Um, I mean, I was so tempted to skip certain areas, um, but I just made myself do it. So, for an ex- for example, color theory. I just really did not want to bother with color theory because it just sounded so boring. <laughs> <laughs> but it. But I made myself learn it. And I can tell you that is one of the most important things I've ever learned when it comes to painting. There is absolutely no way that my paintings would be what they are um, now if I'd have skipped over colour theory. Um, So I'm glad I did that. Um, And it's funny because at first I just thought, God, this is really hard to grasp. But once you grasp it, you actually realise it's actually really easy. But it's just being having finding somewhere where it's explained in blonde terms. <laughs> like, I know a little bit. Is it like, you know, the complementaries and stuff like that? You put yeah, purple and it's, you've got something yellow, you'd use a purple shadow maybe. Uh, well, there's loads to colour <laughs> I obviously have read the book, have I? If you, <laughs> if, uh, I mean, for instance, I've never got, I haven't got black. Yes, I don't yeah. ever buy black yeah. from a tube. Um, so if you wanted to uh, make a blue... Um, darker I would not mix a black with it which a lot of people would because they might not realize that actually the best way of doing it was is to um, mix in some of the opposite yes, color yeah. uh, which would be orange yeah. well, I'd, I'd put in a bit of brown to make a, a gray well depending what sort of gray you want I'd put in a bit of brown yeah. but well you can make a gray by using opposites purple and Just, yellow um, yeah, you can <laughs> yeah and, and purple and yellow and you, but if you if you're not careful by if you add too much of, I don't know, if you add a black or yeah. uh, black is a very flat color, and I've purposely never ever bought it. Um, and I mix my own black. One black that I've mixed is using an ultramarine blue, and then a yeah, burnt so sienna or burnt something sienna like that. Or, so or more browny, so yeah, yeah, that works really well. But it's an, it just makes what you do yeah. a bit more you you know it, it, uh, there's a lot of people that won't do yeah. that but it's because they don't know um yeah. so I made sure I learned all of that stuff I, I found teaching myself especially at the age I was at that point because I was in my 30s and and I wasn't I didn't I already knew who I was and what I wanted to learn and it, what was great about teaching myself is I could really home in on those specific things I wanted to learn I didn't have to go through a ton of other stuff that I wasn't interested in uh, to get there because yeah. I would have Did lost you interest set aside like um, a certain time of the day when you would do this stuff I just had to fly by the seat of my pants Tara because it was a kind of like right I, okay I've got an hour now yeah. <laughs> where's my pencils I didn't have a studio or anything like that I just grab everything sit at the kitchen table and do what I need I didn't have any kind of schedule at all I couldn't because obviously my kids were still young um and you can never really schedule stuff when you've got that going on around because you you they'll suddenly walk in and say mum I've got to be a book character tomorrow at school I forgot to tell you and <laughs> everything goes out the window so yeah I just had to do what I could do when I could do it and the good thing was you you kind of had about nine months I think to be able to complete one course one part of the course but when I was um when I that was when I was doing the yeah. actual art course when I was teaching myself no I just I just learned whenever I 
I had my head yeah. in a book um, all the time. I wasn't doing anything with kids or Paul. Um, but funny enough, you know, I've spoken to a lot of artists who did go to art school um, and they completed art school, but they actually wished that they'd done a different creative course completely anyway. Um, so if you could turn the clock back then, Tara, would you have chosen a different course, such as an illustration course, or are you actually quite happy with the path that you chose judging by where, where you're at now? I don't know, is the answer, <laughs> yeah, which is really <laughs> useful, isn't it? Because I would have definitely done that general art, like the first course I did, the general art, and so I would have done the first year of it, which was brilliant. Second year, they completely left you to yourself. It was basically pointless being there. There was hardly any tuition. Um, but after that, I don't know, I kind of fell into graphic design. Uh, I think what happened was I was sitting there and ch- doing the general art and design course, chatting to one of the tutors, and he said, what are you, you going to do next then? And I said, I don't know. And he said, well, what do you like? I said, well, I quite like illustration. I'm quite into, I, I'm interested in fine art, but I'm not sure if I'm enough of a fine artist, as in I don't just sit and paint. And he goes, well, a lot of people, when they don't know what to do, they go to graphic design or, or, <laughs> or maybe you'd suit, you know, graphic design. And so I thought, OK, I didn't even know really what graphic design was, which is stupid. And so I thought, yeah, maybe I'll try. I that. don't really know what it is either. <laughs> you? Do you really? No, yeah, I do yeah. really. I do now. I do now. I've met you. But before I didn't know. <laughs> but at the time, you know, I had I didn't really know what it was. And they actually ran a course in graphic design at the college I was already at. So so what I did was I st- I wasn't totally sure. So what I did was I applied for, there was another local-ish college I'd have had to go and live near. But they did illustration with graphic design. And then I also went to have a look at some, I might even put them on my list, some that did advertising. Um, and I got in both the the one that did illustration and graphics that was a degree so it would have been three years and then I got in at the local car- uh, college doing a two-year uh, graphic design HND and I didn't really want to do three years I was kind of getting so I'd because I'd already done the extra year than I intended and so I thought I didn't want to go away from home either I wasn't ready to go away from home so I did the two-year graphic design and and now I mean to be honest I've never really thought graphic design was right because I've always I've gone through jobs but I get so bored and I don't know if this is the same for most people but after a year in that job I'm bored to tears because they tend to stereotype you they'll decide that you're really good at looking after a certain client and a certain type of work and it'll just bore me to death and I've never really liked the layout side of things so if someone gave me, here's some pictures, here's some text, lay out a magazine spread, I find it a bit tedious. You know, I can do it, yeah. but it doesn't excite me in the slightest. And I'm not like, some people just absolutely love doing that sort of thing. Whereas if someone says to me, come up with a clever idea for like an advertising campaign and then lay it out, I'm okay at that. So yeah, I, I honestly don't know what I'd do. But now... And I have to say that doing the graphic design course and then starting the graphic design killed my love of drawing and art. Really did. Yeah, that's a shame. That is a real shame. But just quickly yeah. then, is graphic design something that you could have learned by yourself? And if it is, then would you know, would you have got bored of it, if you know what I mean? Would it have been well, right Well, I did actually you? try. I remember before I did the graphic design course, there was a local company, a graphic design company, and they were looking for a graphic designer. So I applied, even though I had no, I had no experience. And they said to me, hmm. uh, they, they saw me, uh, they let me go see them, but they said, we really want someone who's already ha- had, you know, either got a degree or an HND or some experience. So I wasn't going to be able to learn on the job that way. And back then, you really couldn't learn. There was no way of learning. You know, uh, yeah, there'd probably yeah. been a few books around, but everything was changing so much at that point as well because it was all going computerized. But I say the college was yeah. still so behind the times that there was like, I think we had 30 computers between the whole of the college, not just the graphic design. Oh, and they were like tiny, weeny little screens and black and white. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But now I think you could learn, but whether it would be something I wanted to learn. I don't know. I know you quite well now and do you know I know that you don't like being told no. what to do. Um so how did you cope then with being given work to do at college as opposed to just doing your own thing? Did you find that um that you hated being told no, what to do? No, because 
the college was very open, you see. They would, uh, although sometimes right. far too open, uh, what they used to do was right. they'd set you a project. So sometimes you have to design a, like design a poster for uh, the Museum of the Modern Art we had to do once. So, but there was no type brief. So you could do kind of what you like for that. But they used to give you ridiculous deadlines. Like you'd have six weeks to design a poster. Whereas, you know, if, if I was doing yeah. that professionally now, you'd be lucky to get a day probably to do that. Uh, or at least yeah. to come up with some some ideas and visualize them and um but then they'd also say say the end of final year project i remember you had there was about five options to choose from of what you could do and then they were all very open so you might have been able to design a, a book or design an advert but there was no design a book for this you almost had to write your yeah. own project it was actually too open you want a little yeah. bit, but you don't want to see when you work in graphic design, you could end up designing, you know, there might be some little widget for a DIY DIY <laughs> shop. <laughs> and you might have to put together the catalogue. Right, yeah, and that yes. does sound really boring. Yeah. And, and yeah. especially also <laughs> when you get a job, it might not be so say someone's uh, already got a look for their company and they've already had a brochure designed, but then they come to you and they yeah. say, Oh, we want an exhibition. But they've already got the style design, so basically you are laying out. If you know I mean? yeah, so you yeah. know what it roughly has to look like. I think I think a lot of it does depend on on which art school you go to. I think that it does depend between them. On I mean, I wished that I'd gone to an art school where they had said, right, your homework is to fill this sketchbook up and we want it full within a month. Or um, you've got to go out today to Trafalgar Square, you've got to sit on the steps, you've got to sketch everything around you and you've got to spend five hours doing it or something like that. That would have really benefited me a lot. And there was none of that, really. There was learning the fundamentals yeah. of drawing, but there wasn't anything beyond that so if I could make my own art school I know I would I would structure it in a whole different way um, but it would be structured to me and I suppose that's what learning yourself does I know that there are a lot of benefits of going to art school if you choose the right one but there are some real benefits to not going to art school at all I think um so all those years ago when I was fighting with myself as to whether I should leave art school or stick it out my uncle Danny, um, who has passed away now, he was a brilliant artist, though. And he said something to me which really helped me to make up my mind. He said that whenever he visited a gallery, he could always tell an artist who had trained at art school. Um, he said he could, off, you know, he could see that often they use very similar tricks in their work, which gave them away as being trained artists. But he said that every now and then he would stop at a piece of art that was just somehow a little bit different and it made him look that much closer. And he said that almost every time that happened, he found that that piece was a work of a self-taught artist and that somehow that made their work stand out from the others. And he meant that in a good way, not a bad way. What he was saying is that there was just that, that something that, a lot of trained artists do that is similar and then somebody else who's not learnt those tricks just looks that little bit different and that I suppose is, can be a I good mean, thing. I mean you've found your own style haven't you? It took a long long time um, and I think the reason I managed to find my style was I wasn't really looking for it I just found that I wasn't being influenced by everybody else at art school because I wasn't standing in a room for, full of other people yeah. you know so so if you go to art school then basically you're kind of learning in a in a room full of other creatives aren't you yes so you'll sure. get you'll get ideas from everyone who's creating around you um and they'll be getting ideas from you as well so you'll have one eye on what you're doing and the other on what they're doing um so you're surrounded by influences and everyone else in the room is also surrounded by those same influences um on the other hand by learning out side of a college environment you're you're away from almost all of those influences because you're not painting with anybody you're not drawing with anyone um and I think that actually allows you to develop your own style more quickly because you don't have anyone else around you to affect your style at all it's just kind of happening I mean even I, I've always been very careful about that anyway I think because my tutors were constantly trying to push me to paint like this or paint like that I found myself 
rebelling a bit and thinking, well, no, I want to find out how Sandra Busby paints. I don't want to paint like that person or this person because then I'm painting like them and I want to know how I'm going to paint. Do you know what I mean? Whether yeah. it's right or wrong, I'm not saying my, my style is anything, you know, wonderful. I'm just saying that it is me. Um, I can at least say that. And even when I was painting with Rosa Branson, I could have gone on painting with her for years, but I limited myself to learning just the techniques that she was using. Um, but I was very careful. I didn't want to pick up her style. And I stopped painting with her the moment I found myself becoming too influenced because I want it to stand out in a different way. So I stopped painting with her once I found that was becoming a bit of an issue. Um, yeah. So I do think that finding a style, we're going to do an episode on that anyway, so I'm not going to talk too much about that. (laughs) But I think there's actually two sides to what you've just said then, because, you know, when I went to college and not even so much that, but doing these challenges now and even talking to people, like interviewing different artists and stuff for, for a podcast, I find that when I speak to people, it's like, it's like you going to Rosa and, and she gives you tips and you learn stuff, but you don't want to learn too much. Well, I'll listen to people and say, for example, Jen, you know, who did the collage when I've spoken to her or yeah. someone in our group, they paint a c- certain way. I'll think, oh, um, I might try that, but I won't try and try what they do. I'll just say, oh, I like the fact that Jen's doing collage. I wonder what it'd be like if I do collage. Or yeah. when we saw phaser do um she tried a brush pen i mean mine was a disastrous version of it but i'll see she's used a brush pen i thought oh, i might try using the brush pen you know and i don't want to copy what she's done but i'm just going to try using the same medium or same method so it probably depends how far you take that yeah i think um being inspired by someone else's work is a very very different thing than being influenced by someone else's work I mean, there is nothing better that I, nothing more I love that, than to go to a gallery, if especially if I'm finding that I'm I've lost my mojo a bit and I can't, you know, I've I sort of can't think what to paint. Um, I've just finished this commission, as you know, and I know the first thing I'm going to do. I have got lots of on my list on my whiteboard of what I want to paint, but I'm going to go to a few galleries um, and have a look around, see what's inspiring me. Um, but I wouldn't look at something and think, oh, I love that. I'm going to go home and paint that because that would be it's a completely different thing but I might think oh I love the light in that or I love the colors and I'd love to capture that light but in a different genre or whatever in my own genre that I paint so that's how I tend to so where are you gonna go what galleries do you fancy is there anything on that you know about no, I don't go to galleries. Well, I do. The, one, the London ones, I do oh, yeah. probably once a year I go up to those. Yeah. But what the sort of galleries that I'm talking about are the ones that are local. Oh, yeah. The ones in your high street, yeah. the ones that are by, you know, uh, people that uh, aren't necessarily <laughs> in these massive galleries in London. Because often there's more variety there, more varieties of styles. And they, they're, some of them are more surprising, I suppose. I, I really enjoy those types. I really do. But, um, yeah, but the bottom line is you don't have to go to art school to be an artist. I think that's what we've established, isn't it? And if you're still not convinced... Yeah, do you mean they've listened to all this for nothing? Because, <laughs> of course, we don't know the answer. <laughs> we don't know the answer. <laughs> well, we, we, we know that you don't have to go to art school to be an artist, no. But so they could have skipped it could be handy. on to this bit, <laughs> couldn't they? <laughs> we could have just said that. We could have come on and done one, yeah. one sentence. <laughs> but if you're still not convinced um, and you're still worried about it... Did Van Gogh go to art school? You know, oh no, did he? <laughs> oh, I'm so glad that you just. I'm so glad you didn't just tell me that he did because. <laughs> no, I'm sure he didn't. I'm sure he didn't. I don't think a lot of our. I don't necessarily think a lot of masters have got arts degrees. <laughs> you did look that up first, didn't you? No, but I'm pretty sure. <laughs> in his, I have. Oh, I have laugh. Research Van Gogh. Maybe laugh if never, he did. I'm sure he taught himself. I'm sure he was a self. Oh God, I'll have to edit that out if I've got no, that wrong. You've got to leave it in. <laughs> that time you look an idiot. I've looked an idiot this week. Well, not like last week. God, when I was. And this is this is funny actually. It leads quite nicely onto the next section um, because last week was it last week? No, last week actually we I interviewed Tracy Fletcher yeah. King. Rather, the last episode. If you haven't heard that please go back and listen. She was absolutely amazing. But the episode before that, um, we read out, didn't we, the question? We tried to. 
Oh, we tried. We read out the que- we read out the question, and then we read out the previous answer or the answer to the previous questions. And I got some of the Instagram names catastrophically wrong. <laughs> I made a complete idiot of myself. So this time, I was deliberately trying to give you. I, the, oh, I was that. going to give you <laughs> the, the awkward ones, but actually, your ones are still not that awkward. Um, one of mine, yeah, might be a little bit. But the question this week. Or rather, no, let's go back. The question to our previous, or the answer. <laughs> the question we asked before <laughs> that we want you to, that we were, oh, I can't even get it out now either. The question we asked before was, which artist, writer or other creative would you most like to spend the day with and what would you do? Well done. <laughs> so do you want to start with so, your, your answers? Okay, yes. Um, we, always t- we always seem to lose it we at do, this point, yeah. don't we? Yeah. Okay. So, um, some of the answers we got: Block Two One Prince. Um, she says, or he says, I really she. don't know. Do oh, it's a she. Do I have to choose just one? The first two that come to mind. Um, oh no, I didn't read this bit. Official. Oh gosh. At official le Carla. I don't know. How, can no, you can you pronounce? I that? scrolled it out because it wasn't one I had to read. <laughs> Yeah. Well, he, he seems so sweet and brilliant um, and to truly love art and joy and kids and the creative process. And at the Pet Nevins, oh, I hate Instagram, <laughs> his work is brilliant and I just want to learn anything I can from his skills. That's the only problem with these these Instagram names. You don't, you don't know where to, do you know what I mean? Yeah, you don't, you don't know the names, do you? Do you? Yeah. No, you don't know how to, yeah. Um, then we've got Spirit of Creating. I'd like to spend the day with Maria Kalman, walk around a city with her and talk about her inspirations and the way she perceives the world. That sounds really good. And <clears throat> a taste of paint. Yeah, how were you saying this one earlier? <laughs> I knew you were going to say this. I couldn't quite get my head around it, breaking them up. I was saying, is it Atastioff paint? Uh, Astioff paint? <laughs> and then I realised it was just a taste of paint. How ridiculous. She says, or again, she, he says, she says, I would like to spend the day with Tracy Fletcher King. Uh, we would sit with a cuppa and cut lino for prints or I could watch her paint and just swap stories. That would be the best day ever spent. Um, I agree. I'd like to do that as well. Brilliant. So, so Tara, yeah. you've got some. I have. Yeah. Let's see if I can mess these up. I've got Trish Nonica and she has hands down it would be Vincent. I wonder if he's at art school or not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> after telling him he is the only artwork that ever made. Oh, I've got it wrong. After telling him his is the only artwork that made me weep upon seeing it in person. I would have him watch him have him watch episode two ten of Doctor Who, Vincent and the Doctor. <laughs> I would thank him for his letters to Theo, just so he get a glimpse of his heart. Other than that, it would be up to him. I didn't do very well with Aww. that, did I? Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> uh, Megan Jeffrey says Linda Barry. Uh, I've got to look up. I've never heard of no, her. Yeah, I don't know. I think I did start looking her up. Uh, Sabine Conrath says Stephen Fry I'm writing poems oh I love Stephen Fry he's so clever isn't he yeah or how could I forget Jamie Catto and singing writing lyrics or Vigo Mortensen and combining photography and poetry Uh, how can you only ask for one I'm a scanner and then we've got Bridget Blair Whitless back who says John Singer Sargent and I would just watch him paint drinking it all in yeah, yeah, and what? And then what about you, then, Tara? Who would I'm you? I'm not going to say it. <laughs> oh, you're not going to say John Bergman, are you? <laughs> that I, I fancied going out, not going out with, going out for the day with John Bergman, and you wanted Danny Gregory, didn't you? Yeah, I so love. So we Danny could Gregory. perhaps make a foursome. Yeah, yeah. Does um Kevin listen to, <laughs> to your podcast? Because he's going to have to start dressing up as John Bergman. <laughs> I don't think John Bergman's hot. Oh, right, yeah. Oh, that's nice. Right. So the next question, the next question we want to ask, yes, the next question we want to ask you, if you were only allowed to paint or draw just one subject for the rest of your life, what would it be and why? So we want to hear your answers. Tell everyone where they can give us their answers, Tara, to that. Uh, Yes. Sorry. I was, first of all, I was going to ask you, what would yours be? Oh, Danny Gregory. Yeah. You'd only paint pictures of Danny Gregory? 
want to know. Oh, I thought you meant. No. I th- <laughs> You really do like I it, thought, don't I, you? Thought you were, I thought you were going backwards. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, well, I would probably paint um, glass, and I'll tell you why. Because because it's clear and you don't have to do anything. Oh, if only you knew. I'll tell you what, It's the reason I say glass is, A, I love painting glass, um, and B, you don't, you, there's no end, no end of things you can do with it. So, for instance, if I wanted to paint a portrait, um, a self-portrait, I could um, look into a crystal ball and paint my own face in it, in that glass. So, you, it, it reflects everything around it, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, would you so put faces it, and stick your tongue out like I did? Yes, I probably would now because you inspired me and I'm so influenced Thank by you. you. <laughs> yeah, no glass Good. for me. What about uh, you? Faces at the moment, although I might not, may not really? be saying that by the end of February. I am surprised, actually, that you've said Why? that. Because they look crap. <laughs> no, no, I, I love your faces. Not at all. No, no, they're absolutely brilliant. But I know that you bore easily. That's why. Yeah, no, yeah, I know. But I was trying, you could do so many different things with it, I think. Yeah. At the moment, could. that's the thing I've probably enjoyed most drawing. Although I do, I you know, do like the idea of bringing humour into things somehow as well. But you can't really say that as a yeah. subject, can you? No, not really. So we no, need a new question. Too, that can be the answer. Too general. Yeah. So if you were only allowed to paint or draw just one subject for the rest of your life, what would it be and why? So Tara, where can people give us uh, their they answers? They can tweet us their answers at Kit Creatives. Let us know in the Facebook group. By the way, join that if you haven't done already. Um, we've got loads of people in there sort of chatting, posting at work, all sorts of things. And, of course, we've also got an Instagram page, which is Kicking the Creatives as well. We have. And don't forget to pop over to our website at kickinthecreatives.com to find out how you can take part in some of our upcoming creative challenges. And also, if you haven't already signed up for the newsletter, please do that because you'll get a, a newsletter towards the end of each month um, telling you, basically just reminding you what's challenges are coming up for the following month so there's not a lot of waffle in it or anything like that but sometimes we also feature some of the art that's being shared on our facebook group as well don't we tara yeah and we'll also also have those prompt sheets don't we in there we'll we'll tend to try and for the next challenges we'll try and give you something like prompts or reference material just things so if you're short of time you've got something you know quick that you can do And our next episode is going to be all about how to find your style, um, which we pretty much covered in this episode. (laughs) Cut that bit out. But we're gonna we're gonna elaborate (laughs) on how to find your style. It's something that so many you know artists um, worry about. So we're gonna we're gonna face that one next next time. So we will see. Yeah, looking forward to it. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed the episode. And if you did, perhaps you'd like to share it and leave a review for us on iTunes. Back soon.